Dave, are these lab coats really necessary? <sighs> Greg, I have told you a hundred times, uh -huh. the protocol is when you're in the lab, you have to wear a lab okay. coat. If you have a problem with that, then you need... Oh, <laughs> Hey, Retro Tech friends, and welcome to another edition of Dave's Retro Video Lab, the show where I check out old video gear from yesteryear. And with me is my fellow Retro Tech collector friend, Greg. Thank you for coming in today. Greg, how are you? I'm good, Dave. I'm excited to be in the lab today and dig into some Retro Tech. I looked over the device you have, uh, and is it a laser disc player? No, it's not a laser disc player, Greg. Okay. It is a video disc based system, and what we have here is an RCA. A CED player from the very early 80s. I've never heard of a CED player. What's the history on this? You know what? Most people have never heard of the RCA CED format because it came and went so quickly that if you blinked, you would have missed it. There is actually a great backstory behind the development and disastrous rollout of the CED format, which some believe ultimately led to the downfall of RCA. The downfall of RCA? That sounds heavy. Uh, I'm curious to find out more about that, but first, what can you tell us about the CED format and media? How does it work? I'll do my best to explain how the CED format works, so here it goes. It's quite a technical tongue twister, so bear with me. Uh, CED stands for Capacitance Electronic Disc, and the technology behind it is extremely complicated. So much so, the rollout of the format was delayed for many years due to its complexity. Mm, oh, that doesn't sound good. Oh, it's definitely one of those iceberg dead ahead moments <laughs> which RCA saw coming, but they didn't avoid. So you're saying the RCA video disc idea was like the Titanic? Oh, that's right, Greg. And so much so that RCA's iceberg was the CED format. The CED format sank RCA? Oh, it sure did. Its backstory is so extremely disastrous that even a book was written about it, which I'll provide in the description below. Watch Ooh. this, wait a minute, it's very high tech. Oh, that is high tech. I know. We spent a lot of money on that. I love it. <laughs> that sounds awesomely interesting, Dave. But uh, let's get back on track. Uh, how does the CED actually work? Well, quite simply, a CED is kind of like a vinyl record, but it's not. The discs are made from a combination of PVC and carbon, and they do have grooves. The grooves are the only thing in common a CED shares with a vinyl record. But that's about it. The bottom of the CED's grooves have these undulations or waves which contain a composite analog signal which a stylus with a titanium electrode reads and converts into an FM signal which is then converted into both audio and video signals which are then ultimately outputted by the CED player's circuitry. <sighs> The science behind how this all works goes way deep. Even most of the engineers at RCA had a tough time understanding their own technology. I can't emphasize enough how crazy the CED's backstory is. Thanks for the info, Dave. My head kind of hurts from the explanation. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, get him some aspirin, stat. What can you tell me about the CED player we have here? Well, what we've got here is a fully functional RCA SFT100W, which we will play in just a few moments. It was manufactured in May of 1981, which by the way, was just a few months after the CED format was initially rolled out. Now these players initially cost about $500 each and the discs retailed for about 30 bucks. Wait a sec. This CD player is over 40 years old and it still works? Well, believe it or not, it works amazingly well. And considering how old it is, it's truly a miracle. That's good to know. I can only imagine these CD players need a lot of TLC. Oh my gosh, yes, they sure do. But the good news is there's a huge CED player fan base online, which really helps when you need to know how to keep these old gems running. Uh, speaking of running, can we see it play a disc? Oh, you bet. Stay right there and we'll be right back. Okay, now it is time to play one of my favorite CEDs. Uh, this is The Empire Strikes Back, one of my favorite movies, awesome. in fact. You have any oh, popcorn? Yeah. 
Oh, you know what? Hey, Matt, we need two popcorns stat, like right away. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this caddy and we're gonna put it into our RCA SFT100W. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward procedure. Uh, and let me go ahead and show you how this works. So we're gonna take the function lever and we flip it down into the load position and you take the caddy and you get ready to slide it into the front and we pop it in. You're gonna hear like a mechanical clunk sound and then we pull the caddy out and now you will notice that there is no more tab. That means that there is a disc in the machine, it's in a plastic tray, which is in here and gets pulled out so by the machine. So definitely not like a laser disc. No, just pop it in. not at all. The CEDs always, always, always stay in the caddy. Um, it's a long story why I have the CED uh, out of the caddy, but uh, here is a sample CED. They're very susceptible to scratches, dust, fingerprints, never take this out of the caddy. So if you see the disc, something went tragically wrong. Yeah, you probably just want to use it as a coaster or a right. Frisbee. Gotcha. That could be dangerous though. So <laughs> now next up, all we have to do is take the function lever and slide it up into the play position. And in a few moments, uh, the needle will engage the disc and hopefully our movie will pop up. Hey, it's working. Oh, how about that? Now. So what's the quality like? Well, uh, the quality is about the equivalent of a VHS SP recording. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I think probably the benefit of having this back in 1981 uh, was probably minor. Uh, the audio quality was okay. Um, they didn't have stereo players until a little bit after this one came out. Right. Uh, but probably the only cool thing about it is you didn't have to rewind tapes or anything like that. Does it have a remote? No. By the way, there was no remote for this. You were the remote, and I don't know about you, but back in the day when I was a kid, I was my family's remote, and when my <laughs> mom was bored and channel surfing, guess who had to go and get up every time and go to the TV, David, I wanna watch this, I wanna, anyway, it's horrible. That's really retro, David. Oh, it's super retro. <laughs> so, uh, the functionality of the player was really super simple. You had uh, fast forward, mm -hmm. right? pretty straightforward. Now, you had the equivalent of what I would call a, a chapter search, but it wasn't a chapter search. They call it rapid search, uh, and you would just hold it down and it would skip every so many seconds. What about pausing? There is pausing, but when you paused it, uh, the picture disappeared. The picture. Yeah, so it, you know, you couldn't just park it and be like, oh, that's really cool or whatever. So we're gonna undo this and here we go, look at that. It's that pretty, pretty amazing. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It looks great. Now, one important thing about these old CEDs, especially, well, it's not any old CEDs, it's the Star Wars CEDs. These are all pre-special edition. Ah. So there were no uh, special effects added. And of course, as we all know, hand fired first. <laughs> <laughs> But these are really fascinating, um, and the history behind the development of these machines are really interesting. In a moment, we are going to take the top off of this machine, Ooh, and nice. we will see the disc playing inside along with the needle and the arm that holds the needle. We'll be right back. Okay, here's where the magic all happens, if you want to call it magic. Um, we <laughs> retro have a, magic. Oh, total retro magic. Uh, we have the disc inside the machine, it's spinning, um, and we have what I call the needle bridge right here. Uh, the needle is encased in this little cover here, and the bridge is essentially moving across the CED. Now, what about repair? Are there any user repairable uh, items in here? Well. The only one I can really think of that's really obvious is the needle. The needle, or CED stylus, can last up to about a thousand hours depending on which type of stylus your CED player uses. Uh, now, I know on the CED forums out there, there is all sorts of uh, you know uh, suggestions on how to repair circuit boards, uh, align the needle bridge. It's a right. very, 
very delicate piece of machinery. And it is, looks like there's a lot of moving parts, so this is something where you'd need to lubricate. Yes. Um, there are definitely belts in here that I believe can be replaced, but there are a lot of little gears, a lot of little motors in and, here. And the eject uh, uh, system yes. also. Yes. So it, there's there's a lot of stuff going on here that could probably wear down over, you know, gosh, 40 something years. They stopped making these in 1984, hmm. but software sales were so popular that they kept selling the discs through 1986. And if you look on eBay, I did not even realize this. There are many, many players and CEDs for sale on eBay. So if you wanna take a chance and experiment, learn how to refurbish one of these, um, there's definitely an opportunity out there to do They're so. They're available. Oh, totally. So I think that's about it. Yeah. Uh, I think we're gonna get our, uh, wait a minute. Matt, where are you with our popcorn, Matt? Oh yeah, we never got the popcorn. No, we gotta get the popcorn. <laughs> so. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Greg and I are going to hang here and watch more <laughs> of The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, but, thanks for sharing this, Dave. Oh, yeah, you're very welcome. I, I probably have never researched anything more than this device. <laughs> I can't of, begin to tell you. It's, a lot of details. Oh, it's, it's fascinating. So thank you so much for watching. Take care, and we hope to see you again soon. I looked over this device you have, and uh, is it a laser disc, pl disc player? No, it doesn't play dicks, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, here we go. You're supposed to hit me and go, Dave, Dave. And that's why I have a sample disc. Ah, ah. Probably not a good idea to do that.